All right, let's get started with Syracuse's lore. Lingering illness. Texas wakes up from a dream, knowing that her past has come knocking on her door. Dark clouds loom over Vol Volcini. The rainy season has come. The streets of Columbia, as a whole, are generally more spacious and vibrant than those of Syracuse. But when walking through these streets, one sometimes feels a sense of emptiness, as if one does not belong. Hey you, car wash guy. Heard you're from Syracuse, so I got a question for you. Me to wash cars, not answer questions. Don't be like that, pal. Relax, we're not here to cause trouble f trouble for broke-ass bumpkins like you. I heard a group of your countrymen came into town today. And we just want to know where they are. What business do you have with them? Business, uh... Catching up on old times? Old times, huh? Hey, my... My no no always used to tell me, never forget that you're a Syracusan. You don't look Syracusan to me. Me? Syracusan? <laughs> Columbia's the future, pal. It's where the gold certificates are. The young associates of the Colombian families always heard from their forefathers that they came from Syracusa. But they've never taken it seriously. Your roots will always be in Syracuse. It's the crusty old fossils who stay, say stuff like that. Columbia is a land of pioneers. Roots? We don't need roots. That's right, Hick. You'd better tell us where your Paisani are. You don't want any accidents happening in your little shop here. They're in that bar across the street. You got a good head on your shoulders, pal. Don't see a whole lot of wolf pups out there as bright as you. Be a pioneer is to invite chaos. And the Columbian families gradually lost the order they should have had amidst this chaos. But for Syracuse, order stands taller than the law itself. The car wash worker zones out their noise and commotion turning and slowly opening a cabinet to produce a tool that he is all too familiar with. It is heavy and sharp, having been meticulously polished by the car wash worker. The glint reflecting off its blade reminds one of the moonlight in Syracuse. Then, he slowly walks towards the complacent idiots who have their backs turned to him. Like a car wash worker who only wants to scrub the floors before opening up shop. Like a Syracuse. Texas's eyes snap wide open. As her vision comes into focus in the darkness, she sees the poster Exia put up against her will. Her hands transmit to her the sensation of the down quilt. A croissant sold to her at a special price when the season changed. Sora's sleep assisting CD is still playing. All of this lets her breathe a sigh of relief. She understands full well that the dream had never really happened. That the Colombian family never had a chance to pester the Syracuse guest. As for the car wash worker, she has only met him once. A dream that has no meaning except to remind her of her Syracuse roots. Since coming to Lungman, she hasn't had this dream in a long while. So why have it now? She unconsciously wants to see the night outside her window. The moonlight still shines bright and clean. Myriad colors still dot Lungman's nightscape. 
but within it all is an existence utterly incompatible with everything around it. Outside her window, on a rooftop beneath the moon, a wolf is staring directly at her. If everything surrounding it can be called the creations of civilization, then this wolf is undoubtedly a symbol of the wild wastes. He does not belong here and never should have appeared here. But he still appeared in all his majesty, his figure seeming to tower above everything else around him. Come, it is time for you to fulfill your end of the deal. In an instant, Texas understands why she had the dream. Dreams are not necessarily connected to reality, but dreams often are omens, and without a doubt, the dream she had tonight portends that her past has come knocking on her door. Noisy, excessive, corrupt. How far are you fallen to become indolent in a place like this? But at least you thought of killing me the moment you saw me. That means my trip was still worthwhile. I can give it a serious try, Zaru. It won't make a difference in the end. Same as seven years ago. You should feel grateful. Last Wolf of the Familia, Texas. Our deal still stands, which means you still have a chance to pay off your debt. The Wastelands have always played fair. Stop calling yourself the Wastelands. It has never cut deals with anyone. Senor De Lupi. Bro, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce these words. <laughs> Maybe you've just never gotten close enough. Stop talking in circles. What do you want me to do? Follow me back to Syracuse. You are to assist my Fang. Fang? Fulfill his request and consider your debt paid in full. At that time, whether you choose to return here or remain there is no longer any of my concern. Fine. It ain't Zaru. Lord of the Wolves. They can just show up in my city. Take my people. Leave like it ain't no thing. Your brain overgrown with Swedes now too? Ah, my bad. Forgot. You ain't even got a brain. Emperor. My wretched kin. How long has it been since we last met? Two hundred years? Three? What is this revolting outfit of yours? What are you dressing up as? What happened to your sheet music? Or your conductor's baton? Have you finally tired of pretentiously tickling the ivories atop the lofty spires of Lithanian? Mind your business, Zaru. As if I'd remember when the last time we met was. Wish there wasn't a last time. Hope there won't be a next time. And th that I forget about this time. I don't understand. You can choose to step aside. And then forget all about it. Did I stutter? Get your sorry ass back to Syracuse. And leave my people out of your shit. I don't even get how your brother and sister still let you and your pups play your little mob game in Syracuse. There are many paths to victory. This was my decision, and it had nothing to do with you. Y'all has some kind of inside deal there, right? Like y'all keeping to your own turf, about a human business. Take a good look at yourself. You hardly look any different from the humans. And you're telling me to stay out of human affairs. What are these toys of yours to the glaciers that have not melted for tens of thousands of years? What are these ridiculous black glasses of yours compared to the lasting darkness of polar nights? 
And then there's your so-called music. What need is there for music when you already have the coldest wind? Throw all of this away, Emperor. You are forgetting what you truly are. What we truly are. You made up those rules. They ain't for me. My life ain't your business, Wolfie. They came up with something new. I decided I'll like it and I made it mine. Simple as that. We've always belonged to the wasteland. You showed your ass calling this land a waste. Ain't nothing wasted here to me. Think you're any different from the humans rolling around the forest of Syracusa? Didn't get you any... Get, didn't get you all hungry for power? You never thought about where all that ambition came from? Zaru, you ain't made no progress in millennia. And on top of that, you also picked up the dumbest shit humanity's got to offer. Stow your fangs, kid. That's rude. There's no point to fighting amongst ourselves. Nothing will come of it. I'm just a messenger. Here to claim what's rightfully mine. She isn't even qualified to be my pawn yet. My people are more qualified to do anything, including gutting you. Your people? She doesn't belong to you, Emperor. Perhaps you can ask her opinion. Seven years ago, when I wanted out of Columbia, Zaru struck a deal with me. I'd be allowed to go free, and in return I would do him one favor in the future. Without this promise, I wouldn't have made it out of Columbia alive. Ugh, I know all that. Point is, you gonna leave with them? Sorry boss, but I have to honor my word. I don't give no shit about deals and words, Zauru. She's my employee. Texas, I could. Magnanimous man as I am. Give you some vacation time and let you sort through all your business. Got nothing to do with me. I mean, Penguin Logistics employees are free. Even if they're in Syracuse. And you, Zauru, if you dare get up in her business... I'll show up at your stinking lair and rip the tail hairs out of you and every one of your siblings. Make myself a nice broom. <laughs> Child of Texas, you may make preparations as you see fit, or say your goodbyes. No need. Sorry boss, but I'm going to need a favor. Tell the girls I'm going to be gone for a while, but I'll be back soon. I'll just tell them you're crying about wanting to head back to Syracuse. You take a long vacation. I'd try to stop you, but you wouldn't take no for an answer. Then I'll have to buy them some extra souvenirs and apologize to them when I get back. If you have nothing to say, let's be off. Fine. And so, a woman and a wolf walk westward, soon disappearing into the night. The streetlights Flicker on and off. Bulsini, alleyway. Did I make it? <laughs> Good question. When did you? You're pretty lucky. Right when you took the shot. You bent over to pick up the keys that had fallen under the seat. Who are you people? What did I ever do to you? Did I make it? <laughs> did I make it? Can you make it away from air and water? Can a Syracuse ever get away from the rainy season? Who could ever get away from them? Or well, from us. What fam family do you belong to? I I've done everything right. No gambling, no debt. I, I'm just an, an ordinary clerk at Il Ministro dei Lavori Public. See, si, uh, what? <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> That's a hot topic around Volsini these days. I, I, I know the son of Don Bellon. 
That's enough talking. I, I that's my chance. Ugh, what a pain in the ass. A little trick won't save you. Rain's not letting up, huh? Want a bite? After all, this is Sirkisa, the land of pizza. I've ordered all the flavors the gourmet guide said were worth ordering. At least one of us is in a good mood. You didn't forget why we came here, did you? Not like worrying about it's gonna do any good. We've been asking around. Those guys in black suits don't ever say anything. All I heard is that some, that some family by the name of Balone recently welcomed a guest. I'm gonna head over and take a look around their place. That scene though? The foul beasts are probably gonna make a detour once they pass by. <laughs> Ain't that all the more reason to worry? Let me tell you, our girl's from here. With her skills, she won't get into any big trouble. Plus, we came here with the expectation that we might not see her face to face at all. Isn't that right, Sora? Mm hmm. Plays and operas are very well seen in Syracuse. Was here in a tavern or in a theater? There are always many performances to be found. Syracusans from all walks of life regard opera as a way to unwind. They say even the mobsters are no exception. So I thought, maybe I could get into a troupe. Gotta hand it to you, Sora. Quick thinking with their nabbing this chance through Monster Siren Records. Coincidentally, my agent just asked if I was interested in going to Syracuse to develop my career, which I turned down because I didn't want to leave Longmin. But even so, ain't Syracuse and opera way different from your usual style? Sure is. Plus the choreography and the singing will pose major challenges. Plus, we're also talking about a completely different kind of stage. But after seeing my performance, the director said he'd be willing to give me a shot. <laughs> if MSR didn't already have a contract ready to go, I would have had to keep waiting. Are you sure I'm not going to wake up to find you all disappeared? Also disappeared without saying goodbye? That's not going to happen. I'm not even brave enough for that. Speaking of which, ain't it time for you to meet up with the troops' artistic director? You always had these meetings in some kind of company building or theater before. Crazy you wanted to meet you in a restaurant like this. That's not completely unheard of. Some people prefer to chat in a more natural everyday setting to get a better feel for the actor. An everyday setting, huh? Popping up in Syracuse like this don't feel natural to me in the least. But all in all I can do is hope it goes well. When we get back to Lungman, Texas is paying for three months of boba tea. No, make that six. Only six? We got a chance to make her pay through the nose. Oh wow, the director actually showed. Help me! Huh? What's going on? Look out. Spectacular. I've got some great shots from the rehearsal just now. How was it, Senor Bernardo? Not bad. Really? But not good either. You're too eager to perform, Lena. It's as though you want 10 critics to see 12 different emotions in one of your performances. But that's too excessive for my needs. Just give me one thing, as long as it's yours. Your own grief, your own passion, your own desolation. It's not easy being an actor. You are not a prop on the stage, Lena. And you should not settle for being a prop either. Si, senor. Director, the guests from Lungman have arrived. Very good. Are you sure you need to meet with her personally, though? She's a small-time songstress from Lungman. I can handle this myself. Loreno, I know that you, as Lena's uncle, have always sought to impede her potential co competitors. But you could try to hide it a little better. Wait, I I'm not trying to hide anything from you at all. It's just that we don't have a particularly deep relationship with Monster Sign Records. 
Razor. There isn't a single theater troupe in Syracuse who thinks highly of this agency trying so desperately to wriggle into our market. But you went beyond expectations in agreeing to the deal to bring one of their singers over to study at our theater. Most logically and emotionally, this doesn't benefit us at all. And now you're even going to meet her? Personally? It's as you said, Loreno. She's just a small-time songstress from London, with nothing inherently deserving of my attention. But as you will soon see, the from Lungman part holds a special significance. Are you talking about... Thank you. Don't go overboard. It's our life, isn't it? guys are actually using explosive bolts are you right sir uh, I, i'm fine f for now P people you're foreigners r right shouldn't have helped me getting mixed up with these people in a uh, getting mixed up with those people is a good way to get killed am i the only one who thinks it's mighty strange that there's a murder in broad daylight and no one seems to care Ugh. He's got a tough one to deal with than the gangsters back in Lungman. You're only making trouble for yourself, strangers. What a coincidence. The thing I'm second best at is making trouble for myself. By the way, the thing I'm best at... Getting rid of all those troubles. You're in Syracuse now. So what? So that means you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Watch out, Axia! Attacking civilians. Which family are you with? Have you forgotten our ironclad laws? Ugh, talk about bad timing. No wonder this little runt kept running towards Lav Lavinia's commute. Let's get out of here. Get back here. J Judge Lavinia. I remember you. You're from <laughs> Il, Il Ministro. I, that's the best you're going to get out of me for that. What's going on? Uh, I have no idea. I, I was just heading to work. From the way those guys were dressed up, they should have known the rules. Then why? I, I'm just a law-abiding citizen. I, I've never gotten mixed up in uh, with any of the families. Uh, why are they still... Uh, your, your Honor... You think there's been something weird in the air recently? Are the three of you alright? I'm fine, but those guys ended up getting away. <laughs> I never expected Syracuse's customs to be so cutthroat. Foreigners in Syracuse should try to be a bit more careful. And who might you be? I'm Lavinia, a judge for the city. What about you? You can call me Axia. She's Sora. And that's Grisson over there. First of all, I would like to thank you. Your brave actions saved the life of this innocent civilian. Me need my help chasing those guys down? Don't bother. They know the city like the backs of their hands. And you won't ever catch them. I'll sort out the rest. Where are you from? We came from Lungman. Might as well give us give you our business card. If and you ever need something delivered. Give us a holler. Lungman. Penguin Logistics. You whistle logistics company? That's right. No matter what it is. A tiny coin or a big old burden beast. We can take it wherever you need it to go. Day or night. Rain or shine. The customer satisfaction is our mission. Oh. Assuming you have the money to pay that is. Huh? Is our pitch that funny? No. I'm sorry, I've just been a bit on edge lately. Did you come to Volsini to expand your business? Or just for pleasure? Either way, you chose an unfortunate time to come. Well, actually, we came here looking for a friend of ours. Lavinia. We we're about to enjoy a grand celebration. What better time could there be to visit? A new city is about to be born in Volsini. 
the greatest event in the history of Syracuse. Should they be lucky enough, our friends may be get to witness its birth. Bernardo, don't worry. These are my guests. Yours or your troops? Which would you prefer? I hope it's neither. That's too bad then, because the answer is both. It's not too late to go back to Lungmin right now, Exia. What do you mean? You always get the wrong idea about me, Lavinia. I wasn't even the one who invited them here. Signora Sora chose to come to Volsini herself. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. In fact, I'm grateful to... Uh, oh my god. <laughs> com com Compagnia del Alba? For being willing to take me. All right, then. Since you're Signor Bernardo's guess, you won't have to worry about your safety, at the very least. Just please contact me if you need something, all right? My number's right here. Can do. Now then, I need to ask this gentleman about what happened to him. The rest of you, enjoy your chat. Bernardo, Bernardo. Oh. Wait, are you THE Bernardo? Artistic director of... Com 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 Compagnia del Alba? I, I'm gonna... Hold up. We're doing this live. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Compagnia del Alba. Compagnia del Alba. I will forget that. <laughs> that I am. Oh, wow. You came all the way out uh, here just for us? I've always chosen actors myself. After all, you know what they say about wanting a job done well. And who might these two be? They're my good friends who came to Syracuse with me. We're bodyguards, too. The name's Croissant. And you can just call me Exia. Very interesting names. Shouldn't we be moseying along? There's no need. The familia's associates don't cause trouble without reason. I'm not sure what kind of mess that clerk got himself into, but Syracuse is not without its own order. This ain't your typical order now, is it? You think so? I got the impression our Sancta friend here would be quite familiar with it. Nah, even in Laterano. Something like that would have been considered straight up assault. <laughs> the Signora of Syracuse always says she brought guns and order from Laterano. But the reality seems to be a bit different. The customs here might be a bit too extreme for outsiders. But if you plan on spending any amount of time here, you want to get used to them as quickly as possible. Setting aside the little intermezzo you just enjoyed signoria signor signoria sora it's now a good time to discuss your new job oh of course i'm assuming you haven't read the script yet correct this is our troop's latest masterpiece and your role is found was in it, it would be an honor you haven't finalized the title of this production yet but the name our creative team has chosen for this tragedy and three axes. La Morte de Texas. Hmm. What did you just say? Oh, seems my play has already captured your attention. Let's take our time and talk. Oh, right. I almost forgotten all the commotion just now. Ben Benvenuti in Syracuse. Me. Ami Amiche? I. I I don't know what that means. Someone tell me what that means. <laughs> Ugh, just had to be Lavinia again. Rotten luck. And there was that Sancta too. What the hell would a bunch of foreigners just show up in Syracuse at a time like this? Plus she had some real skills too. I think it might be true that Senor Sicilia's guy might already be in Volsini. Ugh, who cares? Let's head back and then... 
Who's there? Relax, Pesani. I ain't your enemy. Who do you belong to? Mm, if I had to say, I suppose I call myself a Sicilian. A Sicilian? Stop joking around. They got rubbed out ages ago. Is that so? I don't have the energy to waste my breasts on you, so get out of my way. Unless you got a death wish. I'm just here to remind you that there are people from the court waiting in ambush over there. Steer clear if you know what's good for you. What? Who the hell are you? I never heard something about nobody coming to talk to us. Of course you didn't. Because I didn't come here to talk to you. That brings me to the second thing I'd like to remind you of. The Sicilians may have been erased. But they didn't die out. What? By the way, we came here to silence you. You talk too damn much. Hope Laplin is not rub rubbing off on you. That we can agree on. Hey, it's me. We're done here. Stay and play some weight? Ugh, you're the boss. Ain't like I got a choice. Looks like we chose the wrong day to come back. Why do you say that? Rain. I hate the rain more than anything. It's the rainy season. I already told you before we came back. Now that you don't have your little brother trimming your fur for you, I think you ought to go across the street right now and get it all shaved off. Watch it or that mop's coming right off your scalp. I actually was considering it myself, but my barber talked me out of it. Said my head's lopsided. I'd look ugly. <laughs> but I gotta hand it to you for finding a way to make money so quick. <laughs> Looks like you spent too much time in Lungman, Capone. That Lin fella. Sure he's got a few tricks up his sleeve and all. But doesn't Lungman's governor have him pinned down pretty good? But this is Syracusa. And here, the family runs the show. It's easy to find an odd job or two, with so many families running around. Everyone always needs some capable hands. Alright, maybe I was in Lungman too long, but what really surprised me is how they're still running the same playbook they used to, used to when I left Syracuse. The families control everything in the city from the shadows, but they never walk out onto the stage. Why do you say that? A new city is about to be born. On the surface, they're in the middle of voting on its administrator. But the truth is, the families backing these people are constantly jockeying for power. What the hell are you even talking about? If we didn't lose our own city, we'd be doing the same exact thing. I've been away from Syracuse for a long time, Gambino. Was it eight years? Ten? That's a drop in the bucket. Who's going to change in that amount of time? It's long enough to change the way I, I see a lot of things. But clearly not long enough to fix your short-sightedness. Short you know, it ain't like we came to no peace agreement, you and me. Our work just isn't done yet. If you're so eager to die, I'll send you on, I'll send you on your way. How can you be so sure you won't be the one dying? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Touch no. Bartender, get your ass out of here. I didn't think the two of you were on such good terms. <laughs> Looks like your patron ain't as reliable as you thought, Gambino. Let's be clear here. As long as the two of you complete my commission, I naturally will not mistreat you. However... The commission is not yet complete. You think you can double cross me? Double cross? If this is your idea of a double cross, then I recommend you open your eyes a bit wider, Sicilian. So where does that put us now? I need to see what you two are capable of. Right here, right now. It's that simple. As long as you walk out of this alley alive, 
You pass. I thought you were going to see you take us both at once. <laughs> My brothers would rake me over the coals for that one. You weren't going to let anyone pass in the first place or something like that. You sure talk a big game. I'm looking forward to meeting the both of you again. Pretentious bastard. Thinks he's human just because he got used to the city. <laughs> Been a while since I've heard that. Looks like we don't have a choice. I'll make sure he figures out who doesn't have a choice. If I knew I'd be fighting for my life back in Syracuse, I would have just stayed home. Was that your call to make? Alright, fine. If we didn't show up, we probably wouldn't would have been turned into Milef Miefie within a day. Bro I I speak English and Korean, please. <laughs> but we followed her here. She went and disappeared without a word. As if she was saying I brought you back home. Now you're free to do whatever you want. You'll fend for yourselves. The moment you start thinking that th this is when she pops up right in front of you. You've jinxed it. You, you look like you've got used to life here as well. She will come for us. Oh? Let me ask you this. In Syracuse, who's in bigger danger? A wolf who leaves the pack and goes rogue? Or two strays. Well, that's new. Never thought you'd fess up to being a stray mutt. I ain't dumb enough to act like I ain't lost everything. Wish you'd admitted it sooner. Still, it's pretty obvious that she's trying to play with fire right under Signora Cecilia's nose. Right. We ain't even shit on the side of the road to that woman. And I won't stand for it. If I get the chance... I swear I'm going to kill her. But then there's her. She doesn't even give a damn about Signora Cecilia. The same C Signora Cecilia. Who sent sends us a letter. And gets us shaking in our boots. And that wasn't even enough to get her back to Syracuse. But now. She's. All over another lone wolf. Oh, what was it she, that she asked again? How we ended up so scared of Signora Cecilia? You scared of her, Capone? Honestly? Yeah. No one can really go against Signora Cecilia. Every Syracusan's afraid of her. So, you want to see how she dies? I want to see how she lives. Hate to admit it, but I'm with you. That's why we need to stay alive. Another civil servant got attacked and a balloon associate to boot. Yeah, so someone's clearly trying to pick a fight. <laughs> Serves him right if you ask me. Spur Ra Rosati is behind it. Those scumbags in their bag of petty tricks. Disgusting. But. A lot of the Dodici families have already said they support the Balones taking over the new city. So what's the point of pulling a stunt like this now? <laughs> Hard to say. The Don's son, Leontuzo, is now a secretary at Il Ministro dei Lavori Publici. If someone has the skills to take him out along with Il Ministro himself, it wouldn't wouldn't that blow things wide open again? Considering that Runt's dumb enough to set his own family aside to be a yes man for the government. You say that, but are you forgetting how many associates ate shit over the last two years because they underestimated him? Oh, I almost forgot. You were one of them. Ah, I'll admit, the Runt's got some talent. But that's only because the Don's been sitting on his hands the whole time. Once he decides to cut the shots? That's true. The Dawn hasn't said anything yet. And the Balones can't name themselves the winner so soon. Enough. The entire room suddenly falls silent. The clamor and chatter from before. Seeming like nothing more than an illusion. I don't care what you believe deep down. But during this tense time. 
you don't make light of the situation. And you don't do anything rash. I know what you're all thinking. I get it. Of the Dodisi families. Only our family, Saluzo, hasn't been placed, hasn't yet placed our wager. It is still too soon for that. Yes, Don Alberto. Since time immemorial, family Saluzo has always been like this. One is allowed to think, but not to advise, because Alberto Saluzo calls all the shots. Alberto never allows anyone to question his decisions. Nobody in the family finds this unusual. They say that the Saluzo's strengths come from the fact that Alberto is always correct. Everyone's here, my. Now that I look closely, I see a lot of old faces. You. You're... But that is not to say that there are no rebels. Only most of them have been erased from the family and were never heard from again. With the exception of a white wolf named Lapland. She pulls a chair over and props her feet up on the table as if she owns the place. Who let her in? On our Bertoj. She killed everyone outside and forced her way in. This is a family meeting. Get her out of here. Signoria, I mean, uh, Lapland. The Don has asked you to leave. I turned down the Signora. I turned down Signora. Si <laughs> I turned down Signora Sicilia's lunch invitation and rushed back like a little good foul beast. Eager to return to its nest. This hideout we have in Volsini. It's kind of drab compared to the old Saluzo stronghold. Tony, do you really have to treat me so cold? You're no longer a, an associate of this family. What? You think I came back to beg the old man to, to let me back into this damn... Uh, I mean, this most distinguished family? Please watch your words. Right, right. Even though I was so disgracefully kicked out, this family has always had a special place in my heart. So at this critically important time, I have chosen to come back home at risk to my own life, ignoring my father's disdainful glare to bring back a vital piece of intelligence. Does that not move you to tears? Lapland. Even if you're the Dawn's own daughter, you've overstepped your bounds. This is no place for you to run roughshod. Oh. You. Uh. Never seen that guy before. Was he new? Y yes, Signora. S signorina Lapland. You're so cruel, father. To doubt the sincerity of my actions. You got my desk dirty, Lapland. Desk can be replaced, right? Let's hear it then, your so-called vital intelligence. Texas. The same Texas you let go? That's right. Belong brought her back. Lapland squints at her father. This homecoming has not trans- it This homecoming has not inspired a single shred of emotion within her. She carries with her only a faint glimmer of amusement as to what might happen, or rather, what she is about to make happen. Because she has been in such environments far too many times in her life, she has returned. The thoughts that inadvertently bubble up in her mind seem ever so laughable. Deli. Just call me Texas. Alright, Texas? How does it feel back to be back in Syracuse? Not too great. I can imagine. If I were you, I wouldn't feel too great about suddenly being forced to go somewhere. Even if it was my homeland. Though, if this isn't too much to ask, 
I'd like to imagine this as well. Your father suddenly forced a bodyguard onto you. She's a whole lot stronger than you. That's not a great feeling either. Understandable. That's what I wanted to hear. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to let you leave. All I can say is, I hope we can both do what we need to do. Go ahead and get changed. We had this outfit custom tailored in old family Texas style. I hope you can be my bodyguard tonight and accompany me to the banquet. Sure. Besides, Texas lies a well-pressed suit that the family balloon has prepared for her. She looks towards the tightly shut door. She knows what she is supposed to do. Fulfill Zaru's contract. She needs to exit this room. Kill a few irrelevant people. Create some chaos. And then finally, kill a few important people. Irrelevant or important? This is the attitude Syracusans have towards life. She too used to think like that. Even now, she has learned to see the world through a different lens. As soon as she stepped back into the city, she quickly realized that these practices were still ever so familiar to her. She has returned. The thoughts that inadvertently bubble up in her mind fill her with disgust. 